Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Module. This is Lesson 15, Random Sampling. Okay, so in this lesson you'll be, you will investigate taking random samples and how random samples from the same population vary. So the first exercise is sampling pens. So the first question is, do you think different random samples from the same population will be fairly similar? Okay, so most of the samples will probably be about the same because they come from the same distribution of pennies in the jar. They are random samples, so we expect them to be representative of the population. So what we're talking about here is, is a jar of 150 pennies. And if you draw a random sample from them and you write down or track how many come from each different year, okay, what year they're minted. In other words, the word minted means when the coin was pressed, when it was made. And you kept track of those 150. Each little random sample that you do should be fair to see. Okay, so number two says the plot below shows the number of years since they're being minted, the penny age, for 150 pennies that JJ has collected over the past year. Describe the shape, center, and spread of the distribution. So here is a dot plot. So if this is 2017 and you drew a penny and it said 2017 on it, that would be zero years from now. So that's right here. And then this would be one year, eight years from now, eight years in the past, would be 2009. So, so we're all the way out to 48 years ago, which would be about 1968, somewhere around there. And these would be back in the 50s, maybe. And this is the penny age. So this is a random sample of a certain population of pennies that they gave us for this exercise. So you want to describe the shape, center, and spread of this distribution. Okay, so the answer to this is the distribution is skewed with many of the pennies minted fairly recently. The minimum is zero, and the maximum is about 54 years. So when it says to describe the shape, center, and spread, spread just means how far it goes from the left to the right. So it, the spread is between zero and somewhere 50 some years. And this here says it's about 54 years. And then the center would be the mean or the average. So you would add up all these zeros, however many there are, and all the ones and all the twos and all these up, and then divide by the total number, which is 150. And that would give us an average. And the mean number of years since a penny in this population was minted, it seems like it would be about 18 years. So somewhere around here would be the average. Okay. And this is skewed. This is a new word here, skewed. The word skewed means it's shifted one direction or the other. Okay. So if we have a normal bell-shaped curve, that's a really bad one. It comes up like this. It comes to a peak comes down. If the shape were like that, then that is a normal distribution and it's centered. Okay? When the data is shifted over or skewed where the maximum is somewhere else, it would look like this. Okay, so now that's I ran out of room to draw. So if our data went like that, so you can see the difference in this the red one is a normal distribution. And with most of the data to the left, that is what's skewed. So this center is pushed over to here, the maximum. Okay. Number three says to place 10 dots on the number line that you think might be the distribution of a sample of 10 pennies from a jar. Okay, so here's a sample of what it might look like. We got a few over here because 30 was pretty um, pretty much well represented. Okay, there was a group here that was higher, um, a little more over here, and you got to account for an older one as well. So this is just a sample, of course. This is an example. You could have had all of them over here. It all depends on how, how you think they come out. And then number four says to select a random sample of 10 pennies and make a dot plot of the ages. Describe the distribution of the penny ages in your sample. How does it compare to the population distribution? So if I selected a random sample of 10 pennies and made a dot plot of the ages, 
that I might want to do this like five times. Um, on this one, the median, in the middle might be like somewhere around 21. So if we drew a line right here, half are up to the left, half are to the right, that would be the median. Okay, so I'll bring in the description. Okay, so sample response might be the median is about 21, which is here. Two of the pennies were brand new right here. And one was about 54 years old. So you have to explain where the center is. You want to explain where the left lowest is and the highest. Okay, that's your spread. The distribution was not as skewed as, skewed as I thought it would be based on the population distribution. So this looks more level or whatever. So you would assume that more would be to the left here because that's where our random sample was greater. And okay, number five. Compare your sample distribution to the sample distribution on the board. Okay, so here would be the sample distributions that would be placed on the board. There's five samples, and these were the samples that were randomly drawn. So number five says to compare your sample distribution to the sample distributions on the board. So what you should have done is had a sample of your own that looks similar to this one here. With ten drawings, and you want to compare your sample to the sample on the board. So, okay, so here's what you might say. Most of them seem to have the same minimum of zero, but the maximums vary from about 35. So this one here, sample two, it's right here. The maximum is this one right here, and that's approximately, well, not quite 35, it's probably 33. Maximum varies from about 35 to 54 years, which is this one. Okay, overall the samples look fairly different. Okay, they aren't quite the same. They're all pretty unique. One median is at 25, but several are less than 10. So if you take the median, you choose five, and you choose the, like a space in between five and five. Here's five here, there's five over here, so this median would be more like here. And then one, two, three, four, five is more like here. And then one, two, three, four, five is somewhere around here. And the median of this one is more like over here. So the medians vary a little bit. Two of them look similar here, and two look similar here, and then this one's in between. Okay, one median is at 25, that's sample three. Several are less than 10. Well, two of them are less than 10. All but two of the distributions seem to be skewed like the population. For example, with more of the years closer to zero than the larger number of years. Okay. So that's how you describe what you see. Say median or mean, depending on how the data is spread. We'll discuss that more in class. And then if it's it's spread. What is, what's its maximum? What's its minimum? So, B says, how does your sample distribution compare to those on the board? Again, to answer this, samples answers will vary simply because your sample is going to be unique in your own way, the one you chose. But a sample response could say it's pretty much the same as sample three, for instance, or whatever sample it looks close to. And you would say because some values were at zero and the maximum is 45, median's around 25. So you look at your min, you look at your max, you look at your median, and you try to determine which sample yours looks like with respect to those three. Exercise six through nine says grocery prices and rounding. Look over some of the grocery prices for this activity. Consider the following statistical question. Do the store owners price the merchandise with cents that are closer to a higher dollar value or a lower dollar value. Describe a plan that might answer the question that does not involve working with all 100 items. Okay, so in this situation, what we would be doing in class would be I pass out flyers from local stores, um, and they would compare prices of those flyers and determine, choose randomly 100 items from the flyer and write down their prices and are the prices closer to the low, 
grounding down or closer to ground up? So are, are, are there more prices greater than 50 cents or less than 50 cents? Cent side of the okay, so here would be a response. I would place all of the items in a bag. The price in the bag represent the population. I would begin by selecting items from the bag and record the prices of each item I select. I would get a sample of at least 10 items. Okay, so they wanted to do it randomly without just looking at the prices in the flyer. They were going to cut the flyer up, put the pieces of paper in a bag, and draw. And that would be as random as it would get. Number seven says, do the store owners price the merchandise with cents that are closer to a higher dollar value or a lower dollar value? To investigate this question, in one situation, you will look at some grocery prices and weekly flyers and advertising for local grocery stores. How would you round $3.49 and $4.99 to the nearest dollar? Okay, well, $3.49 is less than $3.50, so whenever this is less, you round down, so that would be $3. And whenever something is above $0.50, cents, like $0.99, we round up to $5. It says, if the advertised price was 3 for four thirty-five, how much would you expect to pay for one item? Well, in this case, you would take $4.35, divide it by 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 13. 3 goes into 13 4 times. That's 12. Subtract 1. And 3 goes into 15 5 times. So each one is a dollar forty-five. Is how much you'd expect to pay for them. Okay. And then C says, "Do you think more grocery prices will round up or round down?" And so here's a sample response to C. Prices such as three ninety-five or a dollar fifty-nine are probably chosen because people might focus on the dollar portion of the price and consider the prices to be lower than they actually are when really the prices are closer to the next higher dollar. So eight says to follow your teacher's instructions to cut out the items and their prices from the weekly flyers and put them in a bag. Select a random sample of 25 items without replacement and record the items and their prices in the table below. Okay, so here are some samples that I brought in uh, with prices of items and the price per pound and if it's rounded, it, 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 which direction as well. So a dollar twenty-eight is less than a dollar fifty for the grapes. That would round down to a dollar. Peaches a dollar twenty-eight less than a dollar fifty. Round down. Melons are a dollar sixty-nine a pound. That is more than a dollar fifty. So we round up to two dollars, and so on and so on. So this is what it should look like in your table after looking at the flyers. Okay, example of chart suggested. Student, Bettina, number of times the prices were rounded to a higher value, 20. Percent of prices rounded up, 80%. Number of times the prices were rounded to the lower value, five times. Okay, so this is an example of the chart for one student. In my chart, let's take a look. Is that the chart they used? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rounded down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen rounded up. So fifteen, and I think I said nine is a total of twenty four in my example. For some reason there's only 24 here or is there 13 and 12 is 25. oh this one wasn't rounded at all that's where my difference is paper towels two dollars it was not rounded up or down so that one didn't count in the round up or round down so nine out of 25 were rounded down and 15 of the 25 were rounded that's what I would say here. And it says number of times prices were rounded to the higher value. And it was 15. So 15 out of 25 is different than 80%. That's how you would do this, this table. So number nine, we're just going to use this example. Number nine says round each of the prices in your sample to the nearest dollar and count the number of times you round it up and the number of times you round it down. Given the results of your sample, how would you answer the question? Are grocery prices in the weekly ads at the grocery store closer 
to a higher dollar value or a lower dollar value. Okay, so in this one, the sample response says, in our sample, we found 16 out of 25, or 64% of the prices rounded to the higher value. So the evidence seems to suggest that more prices are set to round to a higher dollar amount than to a lower dollar amount. Part B says to share your results with classmates who use the same flyer or ads. Looking at the results of several different samples, how would you answer the question in part A? Okay, so this says answers will vary. Sample response would be different samples had between 5 to 4% and 70% of the prices rounded to a higher value. So they all seem to support the notion that the prices typically are not set to round to a dollar amount. Part C says to identify the population sample and sample statistic used to answer the statistical question. Okay, so in identifying these, in our situation, the population was the set of all items in the grocery store, a flyer, okay, that's a population, or ads that we cut up and put in the bag. The sample was a set of items that we drew out of the bag. The sample statistic is the percent of the prices that would be counted. So there's the three differences. All of the items in the flyer was a population. The numbers we chose from the bag, the values we chose from the bag, for our sample. And then when you do the calculation of percentage, that is your sample statistic. Okay, part D. Patina says that over half of all the prices in the grocery store will round up. What would you say to her? Okay, so in this sample response, you would say, well, she might be right. We can't tell from our work. The population we used was the prices in the ad or flyer. These may be typical of all the store prices, but we don't know because we never looked at those prices. So you can't assume that all of the items in the store typically round up just because the flyer ad does. They might just do that for their advertised specials. Everything else in the store might round down more frequently than not. Okay, that is the end of lesson 15 of your problem set.